Today I got a two part video for you. Part one is my quarterly update. Okay, where am I at? How are my assets doing? Am I making any changes to my investment portfolio? What concerns do I have? Okay, we're gonna go through that. Then part two, I'm gonna talk about my five rules for managing my buckets. A lot of discussion out there on the complexity of buckets and how it's very difficult to know what decisions to make, how to write out the rules. I'm gonna go through my five rules. You tell me if it's complicated, okay? So if we have not met, my name is Joe. I've been retired for six years. I'm 60 years old. I'm sharing my journey, my story, not giving advice, just giving you one person's story on their journey in retirement, hopefully to help you uh, make the leap into retirement with a little more confidence, maybe just a year or two earlier than you thought was possible because of my stories. Okay, so let's get into that. For clarity, background, as of January of 2024, this year, I have just two buckets. I previously had three buckets of money, okay? The reason I switched to two, let's start with why I had three. I had three because my bucket one was in fixed assets and I was getting almost no return from it. Remember in 2019, 20, 21, you were lucky to get 0.2% return on bonds and uh, money market funds, things like that. So I, I had a bucket one for short-term money, but then I had a bucket two, which was um, a 60-40 kind of fund, just kind of a fund that's done well for me. It's an American fund, uh, managed fund, but it's done well uh, for me to get a little bit better than fixed returns a little bit worse than equity returns. It's kind of in the middle trying to get something, okay, because of bucket one doing so poorly. And then bucket three was growth. Now, because the, um, you know, earlier this year, things have substantially changed, end of 2023, actually, where bucket one, you know, you could get, uh, you know, 5% pretty easily out of money market funds and bond funds. So, I really didn't see the need for my second bucket. So that's why I have two buckets, long intro to that. So um, went through uh, my spreadsheet. My spreadsheet is really just tracking my buckets. How many years of expenses do I have in bucket one and bucket two? Uh, that's all it, you know, that's all it is. Uh, so I looked at it uh, last week. I remain at my target of 10 years out of the equity market uh, in really what some people call it fixed, some people call it bonds, but very low volatile, uh, except for 2022 on bonds, right? <laughs> but I, I have that invested in cash, money market fund, um, and a bond fund. Okay, I had some CDs at one time, I had some I bonds at one time. I'm pretty simple right now very happy with those returns. I've got 10 years of expenses in there. Now, don't get confused here. I got 10 years of expenses that I need from my investments, okay? So I have other income. I have a uh, pension income, 16,000 a year. I love it, I love it. It's not huge, but I love it. Uh, I also have some deferred compensation, um, income for 10 years. So I did not take all my salary for about 20 years. It was something like a 401k, but I was able to put in money tax deferred. And then the day I quit working, I, I got 10 years where that's paid out. So that income coming in. Uh, also have some YouTube, big surprise, got some YouTube revenue coming in. So that revenue is coming in. And then I compare that to what I need from my investments, okay? And that's where the 10 years comes from. Hopefully that makes sense. It's not 10 years worth of my full expenses. It's minus my, the income that I have coming in, okay? Hopefully that's clear. So I'm still, uh, just my quarterly snapshot that I just did last week says I'm still at 10 years. Now, how can that be? I just lived a quarter, three months. How can my bucket 
one not need to be topped off? Well, I'm getting good returns out of um, um, my bucket one. Getting that four or five percent, my plan was to be at closer to one. Okay, so I'm I'm just delighted with my bucket one returns. Uh, four to five percent I've been getting. The also I have my deferred comp is invested, so I have that uh, invested about 50 50 50 percent equity, 50 percent fixed. Uh, so that's coming in nicely. I also, um, like I said, my my YouTube revenue I don't count that, um, I, I never know what that's going to be, but uh, it was good the last uh, three months, so I actually don't need to pull. Uh, or even question whether I need to top off my bucket one right now because of where I'm at. Um, so that's a good problem to have. I remain at 10 years of expenses uh, are in bucket one, and that leaves me at an investment um, a, a ratio of equities to fixed of 80-20. 80-20, I think is pretty aggressive. I'm not trying to say that in in any manner other than that fits me and my risk profile where I want to be. I got 10 years that I can ride out most big storms of the market before I needed to touch an equity. I'm not saying that's right for you. I'm saying that's what I'm doing. Okay. So that's my logic. So currently uh, my snapshot at my, you know, quarter, I call it a snapshot. I don't know if that's, that's probably, that's not an, in, <laughs> an industry term, it's just a term I use. Uh, but looking at my total assets from, I always compare it, uh, excluding my home from the day I retired to that quarter, day I retired to that quarter. So that's been almost six years. It's just a couple months short of six years. And I'm currently at 49.3% improved. So I have 49, almost 50% more assets than when, than the day I retired. So I did luck out. This is all luck. One may. Um, I retired in uh, beginning of 2019 and 19, 20 and 21 were very good years. Um, you know, that's where most of the gains were made. 2022 was bad. 2023 and 2024 scratched back, clawed back to, you know, those numbers. Uh, it's a little bit higher right now, but, uh, 2021 in 2021 was a good, was, you know, I was not too much behind where I am right now. So, um, you got to take the good with the bad, right? It, it comes and goes. That's why you need a, I need, I want a buffer from the market drama. There's market drama. Um, you know, great bucket one returns. I wasn't expecting that. Um, and YouTube revenue was a surprise for me. So it's, um, you know, that's good coming in and, and not making me pull out of uh, my bucket two to top off my assets. So, um that's my boring look at uh, <laughs> at uh, my quarterly update. Now, uh, part two of this is really looking at, there's a lot of criticism out there on buckets and how they're too complicated and, and what's your rule for doing this? What's your rule for doing this? They create some kind of scenario and say, you need a rule for this, you need guardrails and you know, if the uh, in, inter inflation is this high and the market's down this low, here's what you do and here's what you do. I don't do any of that, okay? Now, I got five rules, and I want you to tell me in the comments. You say, Joe, that's complicated, or Joe, that sounds pretty easy. That's that's what I need everybody to comment, because I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to make this simple. Uh, I'm, I'm not doing a great job. I probably got 20 videos on buckets, and I keep getting questions. So, let's get into it. Rule one. Can bucket one do its job to protect me against a poor stock market, uh, keep me from selling stocks when they're low, prevent me from a sequence of return kind of risk? That means stock market's low at the beginning of your retirement. Any market drama, can it protect me from that? Well, I'm at 10 years. I say yes. So this is a yes or no question. Rule one. Can my bucket one do its job? Yes or no? Rule two, if it's yes, do nothing. That's the end of rule two. Rule three, if no, bucket one can't do its job. 
is bucket two, the growth bucket, at or near new highs of the stock market? If yes, refill bucket one. If no, do nothing. That's the end of rule three. So rule three is if bucket one is down to like nine years or whatever, you know, say it's nine and three quarters years, bucket one's down a little bit. I want it to protect against 10. It's at nine and three quarters. I just ask if my growth bucket at new highs. If it's yes, okay, I re-top off bucket one back to 10 years because it's my defense. Bucket one, I take whatever growth I can, but it's my defense. All my offense and all my growth comes from bucket two. Don't get greedy. Let each bucket do their job. Don't try to have all growth. At least that's my thinking. My thinking, this is all me, okay? This is not necessarily right or wrong. This is what I do, okay? Make sure I, it's not advice. <laughs> okay, now, hopefully you're still with me. Rule four. Has something dramatically changed in the marketplace that would warrant a plan change? Now, this is subjective. This is the only one that I think is, you know, uh, has some thought with it. Okay, now I'm going to give a couple examples of this one. Example one, there's dramatically improved fixed income returns. Say, hypothetically, that bonds go from returning 0.1% to five. That's a dramatic change. Okay, so I took action at the beginning of this year. I went from six years in my bucket one. I was actually bucket one and two combined. Hopefully I'm not confusing you. I'll just say bucket one. I went from six years in bucket one to 10. Okay, that's a pretty dramatic change. Okay, I went from six to 10 years. But that's all because Bucket one is able to get four, five, five and a half percent returns. That's a dramatic change in the market. Okay. So, and as a result, I was able to take risk off the table. I was 90 10 equities to fixed. Now I'm 80 20. That's not a fundamental change to my plan. The market changed in what I was able to get in bucket one. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Now, example number two the market goes down by 30%, okay? What actions m might I take? Well, I may delay a one-time optional expense, like a new car, uh, a home remodel. I may delay that, say, hey, the market's down 30%. Now, some of you may say, oh, oh, you're making a change, you're making a change. Folks, I'm telling you, <laughs> when you're retired, you don't have income coming in, this is going to be natural. It's natural to tighten your belt. When you see the whole economy is down, you're not sure when it's going to recover. You're going to, without effort, <laughs> take out some one-time expenses. Now, what I'm not taking out is my go-go spending on things like um, you know, travel because I don't want to give away one of my young years, one active, healthy year. I don't want to do that. But... I could push out a car, I could push out a remodel, push out a roof repair or something like that. You know, just think about one time. It's not saying you have to do this. I'm saying it's gonna be natural to want to do that. Okay, and then also the market's down 30%. Hey, is this an opportunity to do Roth conversions? You can convert more shares of stocks and equities at a at the same price, if I want to do a $100,000 Roth conversion, that'll cover more shares when they're all down 30%. That makes sense. So I look for dramatic changes in the market and say, should I do anything different? Okay. Now, it's rule four. Rule four is, is the one that's kind of complicated because there's 300,000 300, things that could happen. And I just logically list them and say, should I do something? Rule five, this is to protect against insane behavior in rule four. Every action I review with my retirement group. Remember, I got a retirement group, two other people. There's three total of us. Every move I make, 
I run by the retirement group. They know my assets, they know my plan. I tell them what I'm thinking about doing and why. And they say, I think that's a good move, that's a bad move, here's what can go wrong. I also run that by my um, financial advisor, my certified financial planner, Neil, uh, who I've told you dozens of time, he's, times he's uh, provided for me. Um, I don't pay him anything, but I can mask, ask him questions like this, like, hey, I wanna take um, some risk off the table because the bonds are paying so much right now. I wanna shift that and he'll say, well, you know, that's crazy not to do that, Joe. Or, you know, if I, hey, I wanna switch to 50-50 equities to fixed because I'm scared about the, the market's gonna be down for the next 20 years and national debt and whatever. Um, those guys try to talk me off the ledge from jumping, uh, for do, from doing something emotional. So those are my five rules. Can bucket one do its job? If yes, do nothing. If no, <laughs> you know, look at bucket two, the growth bucket. If is it at new highs? Yes. Okay. Refill bucket one. No, do nothing. Rule four, has something dramatically changed in the marketplace to warrant a change? And number five, don't do any uh, moves without running it by my retirement group and Neil. If you're looking for a plan, a retirement plan that covers every possible scenario, uh, you're overstressing this. The key is to know the levers, know what you can do, have a simple plan. And I think my plan is extremely simple. I got a defensive bucket, bucket one. I got an offensive bu bucket, bucket two. All my gross out of bucket two, I get whatever I can out of bucket one. That's all I'm doing, okay? That's all I'm doing. I like simple. Next, uh, once a quarter, I also use the Bolden software, the old new retirement software, and I take a snapshot. I look at all, enter all my assets, and I stress test it, you know, against higher inflation, lower returns. Um, it highlights problems for me, identifies the levers, things I can do about it. The, really, the thing that I probably spend 75% of my time on in Bolden is looking at my taxes and managing my taxes. I'm in the mode right now where I'm doing a lot of tax management. Uh, just, I mean, it's just a big part of what I'm doing. My income is down. I'm not planning on taking Social Security to 70. So I got 10 years to do Roth conversions. Now, inside of that, You've got, you know, Medicare and your supplements for Medicare are subject to IRMA, which IRMA is basically it's um, income related um, premiums you pay. So you manage my IRMA, manage my tax load long term. It's a dance. And Bolden just does a phenomenal job saying you need to do this Roth conversion in, year, uh, you know, 2024, this one in 25 on through my mortality tells me exactly what to do. Uh, I enter that in my plan and that gives me confidence on making the right move for taxes, okay? Um, yeah, so th th another thing Bolden does for me, the other 25% is it gives me confidence to spend. It's another source of an, it's another analysis of my retirement plan. So I got my buckets over here and I do all that, I'm good to go. But then I supplement that with Bolden over here and it says, boy, Joe, you're good to go. No risk of running out of money. Run the Monte Carlo. You know what percent successful you're at right here. You stress test that. I know the levers. And I also know what my tax plan is. That's, that's what I use Bolden for. Confidence to spend is a major issue. I've got videos on that. Um, taxes, taxes, taxes. If you don't have a tax plan, um, Try Bolden. There's free two weeks with the first link below. Buckets, you know, I, I hear so often the major complaint about buckets is how complicated the rules are. And I'm telling you, buckets are the boring part of my retirement planning. It's extremely boring. Most, vast majority of the time I do nothing. It's as exciting as, as moving money from your checking account to your savings account. <laughs> That's the excitement in managing my buckets. I only do it once a quarter. It's not every week. It's not every day. Uh, I don't even look at stock market returns on a daily basis. I, I may look once a month. Uh, so I get a lot of questions on buckets. 
like I said earlier, I probably have 20 videos on this. Maybe I said that. Uh, on the design, my quarterly moves. Check in YouTube, You can the creator can make playlists. I have playlists. One of them is called Money Matters. So everything to deal with money is in this Money Matters. I have another one titled Making the Decision to Retire with all the factors going through my head on why I decided to retire. Then the third one is what have I learned since I retired? So things that I'm looking back, you know, four, five, six years later now and saying, I wish I would have done this differently. So I got those playlists. Look at those playlists. There's, that'll cut down on the number of videos that I got for you to look at. So I got 700 videos roughly, uh, but check Money Matters. Now one legitimate, I'm, I'm winding down here, one legitimate con criticism of my Buckets, you may be looking at my my plan here and say, "Gosh, Joe, um, you got you know almost fifty percent more money than you had when you retired." My growth bucket is growing faster than I planned, including my go-go spending. Uh, you're not spending enough money. Well, that's how it looks today. Okay, that's a <laughs> that's how it looks today. What if tomorrow the stock market goes down thirty percent and it's down for the next three, five, or seven years, which has happened? Okay. This could totally change that perspective. So when the, the pile of your nest egg is getting too big, that doesn't mean you spend it down. I mean, we're at new highs. Uh, the market has a way of uh, humiliating those that think they know what tomorrow is going to bring. So defense, bucket one. Offense, bucket two. Tell me how the market's going to uh, perform each year over the next 20 years, and I may change my plan. But hey, there you go. Uh, I'm really just struggling to make buckets complicated. I hear all that feedback, but I'm, I'm struggling to make the right video to share uh, how it's incredibly simple for me. Maybe I'm missing something. Let me know in the comments. I may change totally what I'm doing. Uh, but that's my quarterly update. It's Joanne.